Hello students and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So today we are going to discuss about spirochetes or spirochet. Okay, they are pronounced by both the V's. We are going to discuss some characteristics and economic importance of spirochetes. So spirochet is a group of spiral shaped bacteria. Okay, not to be confused with uh, spirillum and vibrio. Okay, there is slight difference that I will show you later. So spirochetes are a group of spiral shaped bacteria, some of which are serious pathogens to humans and they cause diseases such as syphilis, yaws, Lyme disease and relapsing fever. Examples of this genera are spirochete, then or spirochete, then trypanoma, borrelia and leptospira. They are mainly gram negative, they are motile and they are spiral in shape with length of 5 to 20 microns. Spirochetes are unique to unique in that way as they have endocellular flagella. So what is endocellular? The flagella is completely in the middle of the structure of a spirochete and it is um, you can call it as an axial fibril or axial filament okay which numbers between 2 and more than 100 per organism or depending upon the species. So number of the endocellular flagella can vary between 2 to 100. Now each axial fibril attaches at an opposite end and winds around the cell body which is enclosed by an envelope. Okay, just remember this point I will show you in next slide. Now spirochetes they are characteristically found in liquid environments like mud, water, blood and lymph. So yeah, this is the structure, a spiral structure of the uh, spirochet and you can see there are various uh, or different numbers of flagella present. Okay, so the number can vary between 2 to 100 as we saw that in the first slide. So here you can see this is the axial filament which we are referring to the flagella. Then there is periplasmic space there is cell wall uh, then towards uh, or the uh, towards the outer side there is outer membrane okay and this is the central protoplasmic cylinder if you see a transection then you can find outer membrane same outer membrane protoplasm inner membrane and periplasmic flagella so we have seen that spirochetes they are free living non pathogenic inhabitants of mud and water and they are also known to typically thriving and an anaerobic that is oxygen deprived environment okay so that's the reason they can cause some harmful diseases to humans so some examples here so we have seen that tryponema is one of the example of spirochetes so it includes the agents of syphilis that is trypanoma pallidium pallidium so the another pallidium here is the subspecies okay and it also causes yaws that is trypanoma pallidium pertini then borrelia includes several species transmitted by lease and tick and they cause a relapsing fever example is borrelia recurrentis and others and lyme disease is caused by borrelia uh, burdoferi in humans then leptospirosis is caused by leptospira and is principally a disease of domestic and wild mammals and is a secondary infection to humans as well now this is the diagram of uh, shapes different shapes of spiral bacteria where you can see there is difference between vibrio spirillum and spirochetes okay so the vibrio in vibrio you, you will see uh, mainly rod shaped bacteria which are slightly um, they have a comma shaped structure okay and um, they are short in length as compared to spirochetes then spirillum they don't have um, actually the spiral body if compared to the spirochetes but yes they are a bit confusing or um, many a times students get confused between spirillum and spirochetes and they consider spirillum as a 
uh, genus from spirochet itself. So that's not the case. It's it is different. Then this is the picture of gram strain of spirochet. So you can see they are actually long or they are lengthy and they have a very spiral uh, body. Then in case of Borrelia leptospira and Tryponema, you can see how the body structure is different. Okay, the uh, terminal ends of Borrelia are very pointed as compared to the Tryponema and Leptospira. Leptospira is having more compact kind of spiral structure and uh, as compared to the other one that is Borrelia and Tryponema. Okay, so there is a slight difference between all these three uh, genus from the spirochetes and you can refer to the diagram and if you get a question or if you have this in your theories then you can draw these diagrams then about reproduction now spirochetes they reproduce through binary fusion okay so what happens in this process or oh, this is actually a, a sexual transverse binary process binary fusion process so for this to take place, the DNA material is first copied. Then the process is carried out by replication enzymes starting at the origin of replication. Okay. Then as the DNA is copied, the cell also increases in size. New chromosomes, they move to opposite poles of the cells. And this is followed by the division of cytoplasm. Okay. And a septum, it starts... Um, or septum begins to form in the middle a new dividing wall then starts to form in the middle allowing each cell to have its own cell wall separately and eventually these two cells they divide so this is how binary fusion it took uh, it takes place in spirochetes okay then about the economic importance so there are not too many points to write in economic importance but uh, yes these are some important ones which i found so in case of diagnostic significance, you can write that the presence of spirochet in peripheral blood suggests that Borreliosis or Lyme disease is the diagnosis and which is a tick-borne disease caused by bacterium Borrelia. Okay. Then in ruminants, that is in cattle, uh, spirochets, they are beneficial. Their chemical activities helps the cow and other ruminant to digest food. Spirochetes also live in harmony with mussels or mucils and oysters and where the bacteria help in feeding by acting as cilia to sweep food into the mollusk. Okay, so they uh, help in feeding by acting as a cilia. Okay, so they act as cilia to sweep the food into the mollusk. A spirochet known as Aquaspirillum magnetotacticum is of interest of microbiologists because it is one of a number of bacteria that possesses magnetic particles okay so these particles they allow bacteria to orient itself in the water in, in relation to earth's magnetic field then some can convert or some of the examples of spirochetes they can convert to a metabolically dormant cyst okay dormant it means that it can live for many years and still it can uh, cause we can say it can cause infection when the favorable conditions are present okay so it can uh, reproduce so some can convert to a metabolically dormant cyst in natural environments and even in humans and the cyst form allows this bacteria or the bacterium to survive in hospital conditions and to elude host immune system mechanisms okay so as it is in the cyst form so it can easily escape the host immune defensive mechanisms also okay so these are some points of economic importances and i hope this video is helpful to you all don't forget to like my videos share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you